GMO food labeling became mandatory in June of 2025. So all GMO food now has to be labeled in the U.S. But if you go to your grocery store and have a look at packages, you won't find anything labeled as GMO. In this program, I'd like to look at why that's the case. I'll have a look at what the new labeling rules say, and I'll even compare the U.S. rules to the EU rules. The reason you won't find GMO labels on food in the U.S. is that they decided to change the term to use for labeling these products. So GMO food is labeled, it's just not called GMOs. Instead, they're using the term bioengineered, BE food. The general public has been asking for GMO labeling for quite some time, and now they have it. The government has spent millions of dollars implementing this, but now everyone's happy, or almost because now people are complaining about the way the labeling was done. So let's first have a look at why the government decided to call these bioengineered instead of GMO. I know the general public thinks that they all understand GMO, but I can guarantee you that's not true. I've written an article about that, and I'll put a link to it in the description. GMO was never really defined properly. Initially, the term was used to describe a particular lab procedure. It didn't describe the actual end result. It described the procedure used to make the modified DNA. The general public took the term and kind of latched onto it and started using it in all kinds of different formats. And the general public thinks that GMO is anything where the DNA has been altered in a laboratory. So there's a lot of confusion about what GMO is. And I've gone into that in detail in the article. So that's a good reason not to use that term. A second reason for not using the term is that in the EU, they've decided to use GMO as their term, and they've defined it a certain way, and the U.S. is going to define these foods in a different way. So if they both use the same term, that would become really confusing. Another problem with using the term GMO is that there are newer techniques now for modifying DNA. So there's things like CRISPR, and the CRISPR technique is not the same as a GMO technique. Now, if labeling is also supposed to include CRISPR technique and all of the other newer techniques that are being developed right now, uh, it's a good idea to use a different term. So in my opinion, I think the U.S. government did the right thing and changed the name. We now have these bioengineered foods. So what is a bioengineered food? Well, this gets a little tricky, but I'll simplify it. But before I do that, I have to explain what an event is. So the term event is used to indicate a single instant where the DNA is changed. The government is tracking these events, and, and in fact they have a database of them. And each one has an ID so that we can identify the actual event in a food product. So think of event as just being a change in DNA. Let me give you an example to make this clear. Let's say that we develop herbicide tolerant corn and we make some changes in the DNA, but there are two different ways to do that. Because each of these ways alters the DNA differently, the government has decided, well, let's call these two different events. Even though the effect on the corn is the same, these two changes are different when we look at the DNA. These are two different events. So here's the proper definition of a bioengineered food. It contains genetic material that has been modified through the in vitro recombinant deoxyribonucleic acid technique and for which the modification could not otherwise be obtained through conventional breeding or found in nature. So that's quite a mouthful and for most of us, that really doesn't mean very much. The first part of the statement that's talking about the deoxyribonucleic acid, that's just the long form of DNA, is really saying that there's a change in the DNA. The second part of that definition says that this is a change that can't occur naturally or can't occur with natural breeding. This is where scientists would move pollen from one flower to another. So even though we might make a change in the lab, but if this change is similar to what we could do in the field, 
and ends up with the same result, uh, we won't call that bioengineer. The fact that we use the test tube to help instead of moving pollen doesn't change the end result. It doesn't change the plant that's created. In many cases when this DNA is altered, what we're really doing is inserting a gene or maybe a couple genes into the DNA. These genes then create new type of protein and it's that protein that causes the plant to act differently. You can think of this as a library of books. When we bioengineer a plant, we're taking a new book and adding it to the library. The library now has new information it didn't have before. And that's a pretty good analogy of what happens when we bioengineer DNA. All right, so that, that's pretty technical, but what's the difference between bioengineered and GMO? They kind of sound like the same thing. There are a few key differences. One is detectability. So in Europe, when they define a GMO, they include any product that comes from a plant that has been genetically modified. In the U.S., bioengineered only refers to food material that contains the modified DNA or the protein related to it. So here's an example to make this clear. Let's say we have some bioengineered sugar cane. That cane is collected and processed and we extract the white table sugar. That sugar is so pure that it's 99.8% sucrose. The 0.2 represents mostly water and an agent that we add to keep the crystals from clumping. There's no DNA in that white sugar. So the U.S. says, well, white sugar is not a bioengineered product because it has no DNA in it and it has no protein in it. Now, some of you might be shocked at that, but if we think about this, this makes a lot of sense. The reason we're concerned about GMOs is that some people are concerned about eating that foreign DNA. Well, if the product doesn't include any of the DNA, that risk is completely gone. So why should we bother labeling these products? I think the U.S. has made the right decision here. The definition for bioengineered is broad enough that it should include newer technologies for altering DNA. But there are some exceptions. For instance, in the case of CRISPR, sometimes what this technique does is go in and we just change one nucleotide in the long DNA molecule. Now, changing one nucleotide can happen as a natural mutation in the plant. So very simple modifications like that are not considered bioengineered because they could happen in nature or by simple breeding. So although the definition probably includes newer technology, it doesn't if we're only doing some very minor modifications to the DNA. Another strange exception is that it doesn't include meat, poultry, or eggs. I think the reason for this is that these products are controlled by a different department in the U.S. So they've been excluded from the definition of bioengineered food. It gets a little more complicated than just thinking about a steak. Let's say we have a can of beef stew. If most of the material in that can is beef and there's some GMO corn in there as well, that product doesn't have to be labeled because the majority of the material is meat and meat is excluded. Well, let's say that stew is a cheaper brand and most of the material in there is water or broth. So that's the first item on the ingredient list because it's the one that's there the most. And corn is down the list somewhere. Well, again, it doesn't have to be labeled as bioengineered because it's mostly water and broth. And those are also excluded. What are the labeling requirements? So let's say we have a food product and it does include bioengineered food. How is it supposed to be labeled? Well, the manufacturer has three options. They can use a proper symbol that the U.S. has created to indicate a bioengineered food. It's fairly prominent and green looking. Uh, it's kind of funny because it, it kind of looks like the symbol used for organic food unless you look close at it. The second option is to use some sort of terminology like 
bioengineer food or this product contains bioengineered food. And the third option is that they can provide a QR code that will provide you with the details about the food. Now, a lot of people have complained about the QR code. It means that when you quickly look at a label, you don't actually know that this is bioengineered food. And I think I agree with those complaints. I think they should use the symbol or text, and the QR code can be optional. But right now, it could be the only thing on the product that actually tells you that this is bioengineered. And who bothers taking out their phone and scanning this and going to some website and digging through the information to find the words bioengineered? So how does the bioengineered system in the U.S. compare with the GMO system in Europe? There are some very significant differences. First of all, in Europe, any product that comes from a GMO plant has to be labeled, even pure white sugar. If it comes from sugar cane that's a GMO or sugar beets that's a GMO, it has to be labeled as a GMO product. The definition of GMO in Europe is quite broad and includes just about every manipulation of DNA that you can think of. The labels that are used in the EU are also a little more distinctive, so they have to be very clear. This product contains GMO product, or this product is a GMO food. In effect, the U.S. system attempts to answer the question, what is in the final substance I am eating? In the EU, the system attempts to answer the question, how was the food made? The answering of these two questions has created two fairly similar systems, and that's causing a number of problems when we try to ship food across the ocean. It sure would be nice if all the countries could agree on doing it one way. I think most of you probably think that there are a lot of GMO foods out there, but in fact, the number of plants that have actually been modified is pretty minimal. Most of the fruits and vegetables you buy are not GMO food. So here's a list of the plants that are GMO foods, at least as far as the U.S. system goes. Alfalfa, apples, and in this case, there's only one variety called Arctic that is a GMO. Canola, corn, cotton, eggplants, papaya, pineapple, potato, salmon, soya bean, squash, sugar beet, sugar cane. When GMOs first came on the market, lots of people got excited and concerned about them because they really don't understand the genetic manipulation that's going on here. If you're concerned about GMOs, I really suggest that you watch my video. There'll be a link to that coming up shortly. The dangers from GMO food is much, much less than the dangers from natural hybridizing. I know a lot of you won't believe that, but it's true. I did my master's work on DNA and genetics, and I have a fairly good understanding of what these techniques look like, and I understand how the DNA works. Natural hybridizing is much riskier. So I always thought, the idea of labeling food didn't make sense. There's a second reason why I don't think it makes sense, is that as we go ahead in time, we're going to have more and more GMO food. For instance, two years ago, the first GMO tomato was introduced. That's the purple tomato. It's actually a fantastic tomato to grow in your garden. In the future, most of our crops are going to be GMO. It's much safer to make those plants than to use pesticides. GMO plants will mean using less pesticides, less fertilizers, higher crops, using less water. There are so many benefits, and we've been eating GMO GMO food for 50 years and we've yet to find a single case where they've caused a problem. Don't be concerned about GMOs. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much for your support. If you'd like to connect directly with me, the best way is through my Facebook group, Garden Fundamentals. We'll answer all of your questions there. I also have a blog called Garden Myths, where I've debunked over 2,000 different myths. I'll put links to all of these in the description below. Happy garden.